Hello, welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. My name is Tyler. Today, I'm going to talk about a player that is very polarizing for some. That is Travon Walker, the edge rusher slash interior defensive lineman from Georgia, a guy who seems to be all over people's boards. Let's talk about him and just where he is right now and how people are talking about him. It's a very interesting process to go through and look at how high he is on some boards and how low he is on others. So here's Travon Walker here at 22nd. So I want to say that makes him the 22nd ranked player um, on like a composite ranking among everyone's big boards. And it's all over the place. Todd McShay has him at 14th. Pro Football Focus at 23rd. Bleacher Report has him at 45th. And then you have Daniel Jeremiah, who has him as a top 10 player. Dane Brugler from The Athletic, uh, sixth best player on his big board. Lance Zerline has him at 45th. And then Matt Miller has him at 16th. So he is all over it, as high as six or even 10, and as low as 45 on two other boards. It just seems to be, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no <laughs> consensus here, right? Someone like, you know, Kyle Hamilton, Aiden Hutchinson, Evan Neal. Those guys are generally all ranked top five. Travon Walker, 45, 23, 14, 10, 6, 45, 16. What a wild set of rankings from very different and respected people. Let's talk about Daniel Jeremiah and how he has Travon Walker. He's moved up five spots since his uh, prospect ranking 1.0. So now he has uh, Travon Walker as his 10th best prospect, or I should say at least 10th on his big board. And that's really a surprise <laughs> because I do think someone like, I mean, right below a, a Jermaine Johnson, I think does deserve to be there over him. But I understand some of the potential as well. So here's what Daniel Jeremiah, Jeremiah had to say about Walker. That's Walker is a versatile edge defender with exceptional length and athleticism. He primarily aligned on the edge, but played inside too. And we'll get into that on film as a pass rusher. He isn't ultra explosive, which is true, but he's smooth and powerful. He loves to widen the offensive tackle with his upfield rush before using his inside arm to jolt and walk him back to the quarterback. He also flashes a quick swipe move to create pressures. We'll get into that. He's very disruptive, but he's left some sacks on the field because of missed tackles. There's kind of a, uh, a play that we have. That's like that. The Bulldogs dropped him into coverage quite a bit. We'll have one play that does that. And he's made some incredibly athletic plays, including one particular pass breakup versus Florida. Against the run, he dominates with his length and power at the point of attack. We will definitely talk about that. He destroys tight ends. That's true. I believe Walker's best football is ahead of him. So yes, some very high praise for Trevon Walker. I haven't quite sorted out where I'm going to have him on my big board. Um, but currently, he is not graded as a first rounder for me. I will probably only end up with 15 at most first rounders from this class, but we'll see. And that could change. But Trevon Walker is an early second round grade for me. And that sounds like, oh, well, he's not worth a first round pick. But as you know, most teams, it's like between 10 and 20 first round picks. And so Trevon Walker just being outside of that, I think is completely, completely fine to me. The interesting thing with, with Walker, and before I get into the film, which I will get into, I promise, is his composite ranking for us on our uh, composite rankings. And we take as much as we can from, from stats that I do think matter, pressure, sacks, pass rush productivity, win rate, uh, run stop rate, run stops, missed tackles, and all that sort of stuff. We combine those rankings, if you haven't seen us do this before, and we give an average on where they rank in all of these rankings. And then we rank them and order them based on, you know, from lowest ranking being the best ranking to the highest number, which is the worst ranking. And among edge rushers, Trevon Walker came in at 21st. So behind your Drake Jackson, Jesse, look, if he's like a linebacker, Jesse Lakita, your linebacker, David Ojabo, you know, George Karloftis, yada, yada. This is, again, this is a guy that Daniel Jeremiah has a top 10 prospect. Okay, so maybe it's more of an interior defensive line thing. Okay, but as an interior defensive lineman, he's ranked 15th out of 17 for us. So he's not really... In terms of the numbers, he's essentially overrated based on where Daniel Jeremiah and Dan Brugge have him. I don't, you know, always lean into the stats to judge a player, but it does help me figure out is a player slightly overrated, who's underrated. And based on where Daniel Jeremiah, you know, Dane Brugler have him at 10, at six, he's overrated. But the film does suggest that this is a player who's like Daniel Jeremiah said, whose best football is ahead of him. So I do want to get into that film, and we're going to do that right now. So we're going to get into a certain set of traits, and we're going to go trait by trait, or at least the best I could 
uh, to group them trade by trade to just kind of give you a general picture of what makes Trevon Walker an intriguing prospect and what makes him stand out. Not every trade is going to be super interesting to you. They're not always flashy, but to me, it goes beyond tackles for losses, forced fumbles and sacks. There are some things, some dirty work things, some IQ things, some motor things that I also want to point out. So this first bit is just going to be how he holds the edge and works laterally. You're going to see him, I'm going to play this real fast, all the way through. You're going to see him hold the edge and work laterally. The quarterback's going to keep it to his right, the quarterback's right. The running back has, so he's got a lot to keep his eyes on, right? You have the quarterback, take the snap. And at this point, you have a couple of things for Javon Walker here, number 44. Let me get my drawing tool out. So obviously he's right here, number 44. And you have a couple of things to keep an eye on. One, quarterback keeping it going right, which he ends up doing. You have the running back who might work left this way. And you have this tight end who's been working from left to right down the line of scrimmage. And is probably either going to block him, go out for some sort of slide route to the flat. Who knows? So there's a lot to keep an eye on there. And I think Trevon Walker does a better job than a lot of guys that I've noticed in this sort of upper tier, not quite Hutchison and Thibodeau. Actually, I actually think he does this better than Thibodeau, actually. Um, but he, he does it better than most of the guys in that upper tier in terms of playing the edge, playing the run, and making the right decision. So he is going to walk back this tight end. And again, Daniel Jeremiah pointed out that he destroys tight ends. He's going to walk this tight end back just a little bit, right? And hold the point of attack at the line of scrimmage or then make a judgment based on what he sees. So obviously at this point, the quarterback is rolling to his right. The running back is not going to get it. And if he does, it's some sort of random screen or something to the other side. And that's not Walker's problem. So his choice now is to ensure that this quarterback does not escape his clutches right you don't let him get you to the outside don't let him beat you to the outside and if the opportunity presents itself go get the quarterback and so he does that here he's going to hold the edge he's actually going to walk the tight end back just enough that actually completely throws off the motioning tight end here right so this quarterback this tight end starts here as the sniffer he works behind the line of scrimmage i can't tell if he's supposed to be blocking walker or going out for a slide route because once that is disrupted he kind of just stops and then sort of turns around like he forgets his job. So I think he's supposed to be going out to the flat here, but it seems for a moment there like he forgot what he was doing. Anyway, Walker's going to hold the edge here, right? And work laterally with the quarterback. Basically, his eyes are on the quarterback the entire time and waiting for the moment where the quarterback is either going to throw and he wants to break off of the tight end and rush the quarterback, or he's just going to follow the quarterback all the way to the edge and either drop him for a sack or a short game. And I think him being able to do this basically with one arm Right, He's got one arm on this guy from about here. And he's maintaining the line of scrimmage this entire time. And as soon as he sees it's time to go get this quarterback, and he's closed a little bit of the gap, right? Because the lineman, excuse me, the tight end was here, maybe two, three yards in front of the, the uh, I don't want to say it's the line of scrimmage, but whatever this, whatever this line is right here, he's going to be three yards or so, and two or three yards in front of that, work down the line of scrimmage, hold it with one arm the entire time, Follow the quarterback. As soon as it's time for the quarterback to throw, he's going to break off, right? Get in the quarterback's way and force an error to throw. Pass incomplete. Same thing, sort of thing here, right? Walker's going to be here. He's going to work. The entire pocket is actually just going to just shift this way, and the quarterback's going to kind of roll out. He's going to try to set something up deep way over here. You're not going to be able to see it uh, from this angle, but they're trying to set up some sort of shot down the sideline. And Walker's basically just going to engage and he's going to work down laterally, kind of the same way. Sorry, my drawing is awful, but I hope you get the idea. He's going to work laterally towards the sideline, follow the quarterback, and as soon as he sees an opportunity to disengage from his blocker, in this case, the right tackle, as soon as he sees an opportunity to disengage from his blocker, the right tackle, he does, creates a quarterback pressure, and forces an errant throw again. Right, so you're going to watch him... Come on. There we go. Good. Whole pocket shifts, right? He's already got his hands on the right tackle here. So he has kept or maintained the line of scrimmage, if not reset it just a bit. And at this point, so I'll try to show the end of it before I talk about it. So Bo Nix is trying to set up something down here towards the sideline. I believe that's where he's got his eyes on the entire time. I think at some point he should have thrown to this guy here or this guy here, right? Check it down somewhere and said he's going to hold it for a little bit too long, which is exactly what Trevon Walker wants. So he's going to hold up the line of scrimmage, push him back a little bit, right? He's in full control at this point. 
quarterback is scrambling, moving, he attacks him. Doesn't quite get it right. Daniel Jeremiah talked about him leaving some sacks on the field. That's one of them. This game is in 2021. This is Auburn. Holds here, right? But still, fantastic working laterally across the line of scrimmage, down the line of scrimmage. And as soon as the opportunity presents itself, get in the quarterback's face, right? Try to get the sack, get a pressure. Actually, I wonder if that counts as a sack. Actually, that's a sack. I know he has a sack in this game. Yeah, let's call it a sack. Congratulations. You just heard the sack. Javon Walker, not bad. Okay, so that same thing sort of applies to how he holds the edge against the run. And I think not only does he hold the edge against the run very well, but he also plays, and we'll talk about this in a bit, sort of the, the RPO, the quarterback option, that sort of game. He plays that college game really, really well, a way that I think maybe only Jermaine Johnson can. I, I guess Hutchinson too. But I would say Johnson and Walker of the next tier of edge rushers do this the best. But this one is just going to be him pulling the edge against the run. And he's going to have, let's get this handy Danny drawer out. Again, this sniffer tight end is going to work down the line of scrimmage to lead block, get ahead, right? Find somebody at the second level to block. He's going to try to go here. This offensive lineman is going to engage with Walker here. Walker's just basically, as, he, as I've shown already a couple times on film, maintain the line of scrimmage, if not reset it, blow up the play. Nagobe, I think there's no, no, is Nagobe Dean 17? <laughs> I should know this by now. Uh, this linebacker here, I'll say that. He ends up making the tackle, but um, this is all because of Trevon Walker. He is able to hold up here perfectly and hold this no problem. So let's run it through. Right, so again, holding up the line of scrimmage here, keeping an eye just in case. Right, he understands that he has to work back outside. This tight end, the sniffer tight end is pulling. They're going to work back outside. He has to maintain the edge here. He's going to work outside. He's going to walk, as we've seen. He, for some reason, man, he just he's able to walk dudes backwards into blockers and kind of mess up the play. Like sometimes you don't see him, you know, full pancake, you know, blow up, knock down the guy, but you'll see him disrupt the play because he basically resets and engages with the, the edge blocker, or excuse me, the, the, the tackle, the tight end, whoever's working against him along the edge, push that guy back, reset it, and then blow up the play in that way. Right, just kind of mess up the play. So number seen to 17 kind of ends up making the tackle here, but this is all Trevon Walker getting in everybody's way, right? Just blowing up the play, disengaging from his tackle, working on the tight end, right? And then blowing up the play here. A lot of dirty work. I think the reason that people will really like Trevon Walker is he does a ton of dirty work in a way that a lot of edge rushers don't. And this is a guy who I believe is. 278 i think he's a big dude i think he's like six 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 seven 278 am i giving him a completely wrong athletic profile here um i'll look it up later but yes he's, he's a much heavier much stronger dude than someone like a cave on thibodeau or probably like a david ojabo it's just a little bit bigger and that's why he can work so well inside and outside now this particular one we, i talked about it earlier he does make the right decisions versus those rpos quarterback options etc because there's a lot going on and you see some guys, even like a cave on Thibodeau where if the play goes right. And he's the free edge rusher over here and nobody's blocking him. He kind of just tries to go run and blow up the play immediately. And you can't quite do that because that doesn't always work out. Now, Kevon Thibodeau has a ton of tackles for loss because that's what he was asked to do. And because, you know, you have a 50, 50 chance of being right. And sometimes Kevon Thibodeau, who's a freak athlete was right. Right. And, and what he was asked to do, made him correct because he was just told to attack, but it can't always work like that. And you want to see a little bit more discipline. And Trevon Walker has that in a way that I think someone like a cave on Thibodeau does not. Again, the only person I think is similar is Jermaine Johnson. So he's going to end up being the free guy here. Let me just walk this forward a little bit. He's going to be free, right? Uh, the free man on the outside here. And he works that shuffle technique. And I, when I talked to Trey Sterling, the defensive back from Oklahoma state, he talked about this as well although he was a, a safety playing the edge, same sort of rules apply, right? You want to shuffle that shuffle technique here, right? You don't want to early commit to this running back because the quarterback will see that and, you know, run to the outside here. I'm getting, I'm sorry. My, my drawings are really bad, but you get the idea, right? If he crashes too hard this way, quarterback goes, thanks, right? Runs for a touchdown here in the end zone. Maybe he can throw it to this tight. I don't know. You know, there's something else. Point is you can't take yourself out of the play by only just going for it and praying that you're correct, right? As I talked to Trey Sterling, again, the defensive back from Oklahoma State, go ahead and watch that interview. He says, know before you go. 
And again, you could be a little bit hesitant. And if it's a short yardage play, maybe it's third and one, you know, maybe you being a little bit hesitant and having to guess just a little bit means they pick up the first down. But in general, know before you go, shuffle tech, don't race to the running back. And he plays it perfectly here. Now, the quarterback is absolutely going to fumble this ball, but he's in position. Oh, and he fumbles it again. <laughs> so Walker's in position because the quarterback keeps it. Right, so so Bo Nix, I believe this is Bo Nix, right? He's going to keep it. Something happens here. Some sort of exchange, fumble on the exchange there. But Walker is in position because of that shuffle tech, because he waits, right? He goes after he knows, and he knows that that ball is live. So he goes after the quarterback, pops it again, frees at the play, right? He makes a big play for his defense. Yes, it's kind of, you know, it, it's it's mostly on the fault of the quarterback and the running back exchange here. But if Walker goes ahead and he attacks the running back here and he's out of the play, right? There's a chance that Nick's picks this up and, you know, runs the pylon, picks up more yards or something. Instead, this goes from, you know, what maybe could be a, a big gain or a small gain or basically anything else. It turns into a best case scenario because Walker is there and ready to go. Punches the football out, creates an opportunity for his defense, right? Boom. Another, like he's all happy, right? Walker's a pretty fired up guy. When he makes plays, he lets you know. Right. Give another opportunity to Justin Herbert. I love that. So another play that I don't think a lot of people will point out because it's, you know, not a sack or something splashly is the way that he's able to beat the cup block. And I think this happened a couple of times. Again, it's something that some guys just aren't that good at. Some guys that just aren't as well practiced along the edge or as well coached along the edge. They can't do this. But someone like a Javon Walker can, because again, he's very well coached. This Georgia defensive line is freaking so well coached. Maybe they're not all the best pass rushers or all the best run defenders, but by golly, they are pretty well coached. And that helps them above their technique, or excuse me, above their athleticism, above their, their natural raw ability more often than not. So how do you beat the cut block, right? And you want to look for four different things. One, right? Let's see. Ooh, I get to be all fancy and type here. Identify the cut block, right? You want to identify, and you'll see this, this, this offensive tackle, this left tackle here, Flash pretty early, that's going to be a cut block, but you have to identify that. You have to be ready for it. Two, stay square. Don't do anything crazy. Don't take yourself out of the play. Stay square. Three, press that blocker into the ground. Ooh, my typing still suck. Especially when I'm looking at uh, it's a very awkward angle. And then finally, keep those feet active. Keep feet active. Effective, keep feet active. There we go. <laughs> so as long as you do all those things, now that I finally learned how to type, um, you should be able to beat your cup block, right? Identify that there's a cup block, stay square, press that blocker into the ground with your hands and keep those feet active. It's very quick. This is a very, very quick play from Trevon Walker here, mostly because the tackle does flash so early, but he makes it work. So let's see if he does those things. See if I can pause it at the right times as well. Trevon Walker is obviously over here to the right of your screen, working against the left tackle. So he's going to flash pretty early, right? He's pretty aware fairly early on that this is exactly what the, <laughs> this guy goes head first. Uh, I don't know what the technique is required for a cut block, but clearly he's, he's very certain that this is what's going to happen. So this identification happens very early. He's going to stay square. Let's see if I can get him pushing the blocker into the ground with his hands, right? So right here, his hands are on top of the pads of the edge, or excuse me, of the offensive tackle. He pushes that blocker into the ground, right? Hop a little bit, keep those feet active and is on his feet. And if the quarterback had held onto the ball any longer, typically it doesn't happen on a play like this after a cut block, right? So maybe this guy cuts and the quarterback is looking to throw quickly to the left for something, an RPO, whatever, right? Trevon Walker is now in position to get his hands up and knock that ball down or pick it off because he plays this so well. So again, identify, stay square, press the blocker into the ground with your hands, keep those feet active and work, right? And that's what I want to see with someone playing the edge. I want to see that they're able to do that. I think it happens a couple of times on film. I haven't seen and, and paid attention to every play, but I thought that was a play that really stuck out to me, even if you know it doesn't stick out to other people. I like finding the dirty work plays. I like finding the technique plays. That's what gets me so fired up about some prospects because it's not flashy, but it's important. Those things are important, and that shows me that he is well-coached and that he is a smart player who can take that coaching and apply it to real-world circumstances. So or not real world. It is the real world, but to football circumstances. Hopefully he's not doing this out in the real world. Okay, so the other one, same thing here. More working that RPO, 
uh, read option sort of look. All right, so he's going to hold up the edge here. Right, basically the same thing. Once he realizes that, so he's going to engage with the left, left tackle here. Once he realizes the quarterback is no longer going to be keeping the football, right? So he's basically got full. Now, I guess he should hold up the edge a little bit more. The off chance the running back cuts to the left, but given where the play is supposed to go, Walker, I think, just just fine here. He holds up along the edge. As soon as he sees that it's time and the quarterback is not going to be keeping this football, he makes a play down the line of scrimmage to go ahead and attack the running back. I should point out that he's right here, in case I didn't already. Right, hold up at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback does not have the football. And shove your, <laughs> shove your tackle into the running back. So he's going to go here, right? As soon as it's time. Now, this play is already dead. This, this linebacker, whoever this is, has already taken care of the play. But Walker is still in it. And just for good measure, he's going to take the tackle. You see him just drive him, flip him over, right? When you, when you finished a play like that, you, you probably won. When you finished almost in the Cassius Clay, uh, or no, sorry, Muhammad Ali at the time, you know, what's my name against Sonny Liston Pose? If I'm not mistaken. Sorry, correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, that's, that's how you know you won, for sure. Right, so again, hold up along the edge. Quarterback's not keeping it. Go. Go get him. Right, that's holding the edge. I love that. Continually also collapsing the pocket from the edge as well. Last one here. He's going to be the free edge on the back side of the play. Right, shuffle one more time. Right, eyes on the quarterback, eyes on the running back. Quarterback's not keeping it. What do you do? Work down, go. Right, one more time. Right, so he's free. Again, eyes on the quarterback. Quarterback's not keeping it. You're good. Quarterback's not going to keep it, barring some crazy trick play, which again, I, I don't think. No, that's not what you're looking for here. Quarterback is not keeping it. Go. Make the play. And he does. Just fantastic work along the edge on the outside. Wow, I almost have exactly one minute of film for run defense and one minute of film for pass rush. That's not bad. So the pass rush is where he does need more work. Trevon Walker is definitely a better run defender than he is a pass rusher. However, you can see what he's able to do and you can see the ways that you can use him in your defense if you have a better edge rusher group. Maybe, let's say, uh, Joey Bosa and Echenna Nwosu, you can use Trevon Walker to disrupt the offense in other ways. So we'll get to that in a bit. So his pass rush to the outside, it tends to be some variation of, of working the leverage of the tackle, maybe swipe the hand, some sort of club, and then dip and rip through, right? Work the wrist, work the elbow. That tends to be what he does. I think that's where he works the best on the outside. He's not particularly bendy. He doesn't really have, you know, a, a spin move or anything crazy like that. He's going to have to develop those tools, but you can work with what he has. Um, so this particular play here, again, I talked about, he's going to work the leverage of the tackle just a little bit. Eh, maybe not as much this play, um, but you are going to see him. I'm, I'm sorry that the, the field goal post is in the way. It's in the way a couple of times for whatever reason. It's kind of hard to tell, but you're going to see him already attack the elbow of this offensive tackle here. When that doesn't work, when the offensive lineman's hands are on him, you're going to see his right hand work down towards the wrist of the offensive tackle, right? And he's going to swipe that, right? Dip and rip under. And get after, cause an error to throw. I didn't see the, I didn't show the end of it, but it's an incomplete pass. For what it's worth, I believe that you can also watch uh, Davis right here. Walk back this guy as well. I mean, <laughs> what a nightmare. You have Walker here, Davis here. I'm pretty sure that's Wyatt throwing some other guy to the ground. I mean, what a, what a front for Georgia. But in this particular case, yes, right? I'm going to work the shoulder, right? Work some leverage with my left arm here. Work the wrist, attack the wrist, swipe, dip, rip. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, same thing here. He's going to work to the outside. I, is this Kennard? No, this is a tight end, I think. Yeah, I don't know who this is. But he's going to work this guy, same sort of thing. He's going to try to long arm him first and then work that dip and rip, right? So long arm a little bit, work that leverage, get his eyes off of you. I assume that because no flag was thrown, that this was legal. It wasn't quite hands to the face. So that works for me, right? Long arm. You can see his left hand attack the wrist right here, right? He's, not, he's going to try to rip through, right? Dip and rip through. But this, I don't know who this is. This guy's going to be holding his wrist the entire time. So he literally can't do anything because he's being held 
by his wrist, but you're gonna see the way that he works there, sort of like the last play, right? Got tackle leverage, right? Work the wrists, work the elbows, try to dip and rip through. He can't do that because the dude's holding on to him for a pressure there. So that's kind of the way he works to the outside. Now he does have something that he does on the inside as well, whether he's as an edge rusher working back inside or as an interior defensive lineman guy, right? He's gonna be here in his four point stance. He can also work back inside with this sort of inside move that he has. Again, it's not my favorite. Um, I'm going to run it through real quick. This is going to be him right here. Let me try to draw it. So he's going to be he's gonna be right here. And what he tends to try to do is you're going to see him uh, when he stands back up, when he rushes the, what was the guard here, he's going to hard step, kind of like hezzy dummy step to the outside and then work back inside. That tends to be how he works when he attacks the inside. If he's not slanting, that is. If it's a slant and he's just going straight at it, then yeah, he's just, it's a slant. But when he's working to try to work outside first and work back inside, that's what he tends to try to do, right? Some sort of demi step, just a demi, dummy step, hezzy, right? And then some sort of club swipe to work back inside, to work the hands. A lot of hand attacking for this guy. So let me go ahead and run it through. I'll run it through once and I'll explain it. It's very quick. I was talking to Gavino Borges about this because he's a big fan of Trevon Walker. It's not like his best rep by any means, but it does give you a sense of what he tries to do. I'll run it through one more time. And it does create the quarterback pressure. Trevon Walker is very excited. <laughs> so, you know, overall it does work. All right, it gets the job done. It's just not really a, a finisher type move and he's not quite quick at everything just yet. But it's not bad. So again, right? Hard step, hezzy, dummy, whatever you want to call it. Work back inside. Club, swipe, whatever, something back to the inside. I'm just kind of giving a, a general idea of what he does. Rather right, get to the quarterback here. Uh, same idea here. This time with a, I think it's a twist with 88. So Walker's on the, again, field goal posts. Walker's the edge now. Um, so he's going to be lined up on the outside here, number 44, which you can't see because of the stupid field goal post. He's going to work that twist with 88 here. Same sort of thing. Not quite the same, but because it's good. It's going to be halfway between my previous point about him working outside back inside, right, with that swipe. But also the second part to my next point, which is going to be how defenses sort of use him and how he can be best utilized in a defense and, and how you can kind of manufacture pressures and pass rush with him while he learns to work his, his, his pass rush moves. So right here, I basically going to stunt. Yeah. I think he's going to end up going here, and that guy works back outside. If I'm not mistaken, this is what happens. You don't have a ton of notes. I try not to read. Well, I try not to read the uh, <laughs> you know, all the stuff I'm talking to you guys. Right, so he works back inside. Sort of that outside. Right, sort of dummy, sort of hesitation. Work back inside, split with the tackle and the guard, and just create some havoc. Right, create some problems. Outside, dummy, back inside, kind of a rip, I guess. That's not quite a slant. Right, he's not slanting directly between these guys, trying to work outside, then back inside on that stunt. And it works. Right, 88 gets home, at least for a hit. A right, walker causing plenty of problems. Of course, you know, 17. Nicobe Dean's causing problems. It's all kinds of problems, man. This Georgia defense sucks to play. <laughs> it must be awful to play someone like, uh, like Georgia. All right, scrolling through, moving there. Almost there, guys. So yeah, you can just get a feel for how the defense is going to use him. You can watch him and hopefully even paying attention. I haven't really brought this and brought it to your attention specifically, but you can see that he's lined up pretty much everywhere. Hand of the dirt on the edge, standing up along the edge, over the guard, over the center stunt twist whatever you want him to do he can do it he is probably the most diverse like scheme versatile guy of the edge rusher group i don't think he's particularly a master interior guy or a master edge guy but he's good at least at both of those things and and, and he's he, he's good enough to hold up at the next level at least and against the run and manufacturing pressures with him as a pass rusher as a pure pass rusher, maybe not necessarily, but I think he can develop that over time. So again, same sort of idea here. I believe he's going to twist with 33 here. And it, honestly, it's kind of more bad blocking. I couldn't tell you much about offensive line protection schemes 
it seems to me that he just kind of splits and somebody is a miscommunication. 71 reads it wrong. 74 takes it correctly or something. So he kind of gets a free shot here, but you can get an idea of how defenses would use him, how Brennan Staley would use him, right? You can put, you know, instead of Trevon Walker inside, you can have Trevon Walker and Joey Bosa with the Chenin Wosu and Arnold Ebiketti in the second round. I don't know. You can use so many different things or, or even Chris Rumpf, right? You have Chris Rumpf, Chenin Wosu, Joey Bosa, Trevon Walker, or I should say Tra- Joey Bosa, Trevon Walker here. And you can do all sorts of things with him, right? You know what that does? So let's say that this is, um, let's say it's in Wosu. So what's in Wosu's number 42? Wow, that is horrible writing. All right, we have 44 here. That's Trevon Walker. We'll have Mr. 97, Joey Bosa. And we'll have Chris Rumpf, who is 94, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, that was terrible. <laughs> but the point is, who's not on the field right now? You can take Jerry Tilly off the mother effing field because you have Trevon Walker who can work inside like this. Now, I would like them to probably find a better edge rusher than Chris Rumpf in year two. I don't know if he's quite there yet, but you can take someone like Shannon Wosu, Trevon Walker, Joey Bosa, Chris Rumpf, and make that your pass rush package, right? Maybe you have uh, Derwin James here. Let's just get rid of all the first rounders. Let's put Derwin James here instead. All right, Nasir Adderley, I don't know how they do it. Point is, you can do a lot with Walker, so much so that you can take some of your better, your, your bad players off the field and, you know, just put him in there because I think he can do maybe a little bit more. That's a whole other story for another time. This is more of a Trevon Walker film breakdown, not a Jerry Tillery rant. <laughs> um, but again, you can get a feel for how defenses would use him. You can see how Brandon Staley would use him. Just create some havoc. Imagine Jerry Tillery, the way they use him, but he could actually be good against the run and he could actually be an edge rusher. Way more valuable than Jerry Tillery. This is a three down player, probably better at the first two downs than that third down, obvious pass rushing situation. But then again, put him along the interior, stunt, twist, loop, slant, whatever you want to do with him. Put Joey Bosa on the interior. Like, go create some havoc, man. Improve that secondary. There's a lot you can do with him. I'm just saying. One more here. I believe it's another twist. Stunt. I am really bad at identifying these things with 88. Right, so he goes that way, he goes that way, crisscross a little bit. That's why I'm calling it a twist. These are all kind of redundant, so I'm going to blow through these just a little bit. But again, you get the idea. All right, switch it up. Closing speed. Playing Georgia sucks. <laughs> all that good stuff. One more time here, guys. One more, folks. He goes this way. That guy goes that way. Here we go. Let's get the quarterback. Kill. Not a lot of guys you can line up along the interior that can, I know he's not in the interior here, right? Interior here though. Not a lot of guys that have the speed to be able to close in on quarterbacks like this. Now I'm not saying Bo Nix is the most athletic quarterback, but you need that, right? Finish the play. I mean, you have someone like a Patrick Mahomes who loves to extend, not so much Derek Carr. Uh, we'll see who the, the Broncos end up with right? in the AFC West, really in the AFC. Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. You will got guys who can be, you can use for creative fronts, creative schemes, creative blitzes, pass rushes, whatever, but also guys who can finish the play because they just have the athleticism to finish the play. And Trevon Walker can do that. Okay, last one. It's just a coverage play for funsies. Honestly, not my favorite coverage guy, but this is just giving you an idea of what he can do in coverage. So he is in coverage here. And he's going to drop back somewhere like over here. Wow, what a horrible drawing. Don't ever look at that again. And he's actually going to get in the way of the receiver that I believe is trying to run like a little slant over here. And he's, getting the, he's going to get in the path of that guy. So he, Bo Nix is not going to throw it. And when, as soon as Nix takes off to scramble, uh, Walker's going to end up just chasing after him and knocking him down with emphasis. Drops into coverage. Oh, can't throw to that guy. Oops, Trevon Walker's in the way. As soon as Nick scrambles, he takes off. Go get him. So I'm just going to talk over the film as it plays through one more time. It's a very, very 
unique sort of player in this class. Someone like Thibodeau, a way better pass rusher, a more athletic pass rusher, but not the same against the run. Someone like Ojabo is your pass rusher freak. Who needs to still develop and is very raw, probably more athletic than Walker, but he will not be as good against the run. Jermaine Johnson, I do think is a somewhat similar player, but I think Trevon Walker is going to be bigger and stronger against the run, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I do think Trevon Walker, I think he has more pass rush moves to him, but Jermaine Johnson is a better pass rusher, I guess. So I do have Johnson and ahead of Walker. I'm not going to lie. Like Johnson to me is a better player, right? Very similar against the run. And I think about the same as a pass rusher, although I think Johnson has more juice and I do want to bet on his traits more, but Walker, man, like he's a, he's got a lot. The way that he plays the run, the fact that he can hold up and play the run, right? Not just that he's smart against the run, but he's also good at it because of his body type, his strength, right? All that good stuff. Very coachable guy, clearly. A guy who can do a lot for your defense if you're creative. And the pass rush stuff, I think, is going to come. There are some things that he has working outside that we showed, some things working back inside that we showed. It's not quite amazing. You know, I don't think he's going to be Aaron Donald as an interior rusher. You know, he's not going to be Joey Bosa as an outside rusher. But I think he's a guy that you can tell is very coachable and then you can definitely maximize. So I can see why teams or or players, not players, analysts are so high on someone like a Javon Walker because of what he can do. And you want to focus on what he can do. And what he can do is a lot. The question is, can you as a team get him to do that consistently and particularly as a pass rusher can you get him to do that better and more consistently so you know i don't know what where he's going to go in the draft some people have him i think daniel jeremiah mocked him to the giants at five which would be crazy because to me trevon walker he's behind Karloftis and thibodeau for me or excuse me he's behind hutchinson and thibodeau for me he's behind johnson I might put him behind Ojabo. I'm not quite sure yet. And then depending how I feel about Karloftis and all things I've heard about him, he might be like edge five or six. So the idea that he goes top five or that to Daniel Jeremiah and Dane Brugler, he's a top 10, top six player. That's a bit rich for me, especially because you know, I like someone like a Charles Cross, Evan Neal, Ike McQuanu, And I can't imagine, you know, Walker being the fifth guy in that group or a top 10 guy in that group. I think what he shows on film is awesome. And I think the things that we've shown here, I think there's a lot he can do. I just don't know if he's got it all together yet, right? Like Aiden Hutchinson basically has this whole freaking edge rusher thing put together. Walker's really not quite there yet, but there are traits that you like. So, you know, some people have him as their guy. Clearly, Dane Brugler and Daniel Jeremiah do. I know Craig, who listens to the show, he has him as one of his guys for sure. And I get it. I don't know if I'm ready to call him one of my guys, but he's one of those guys where if he's there at 17, even with a tenant and Wosu back, I could see Brandon Staley saying, you know what? That guy fits what I want to do. Let's create some chaos. Let's be one heck of a front. Let's control the line of scrimmage. Let's definitely improve against the run. Let's put a big, strong, smart dude who can play the run against the edge there on the interior, rush outside, rush inside, stand up, drop back, a smart player from a great school. He drafted two players from that school already. I think Trevon Walker could be a third. So what do you guys think of Trevon Walker? Hopefully it's Trevon, not Trayvon, because I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Let me know what you guys think of Mr. Walker. Would you take him at 17? Is he not someone for you? Do you love him like Daniel Jeremiah, Dan Brugler? Let me know, guys. I'm very interested to see and hear what you guys think about him because I really don't know. Again, he's a guy that's 6th, 10th, 13th, 14th, 45th, 45th. Who knows with Trevon Walker? I like him. What do you guys think about him? Guys, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for listening. Take care. And as always, bolt up.